Hi there girls and boys, happy Monday and how are you today? I really hope you've had a really fantastic weekend and you're ready now for a little bit of work this week. So we've met Plop and we've gone through three chapters and Plop, who's afraid of the dark, has been told that dark is exciting, dark is kind and dark is fun. And today he's going to be told that dark is necessary. So Stay tuned, find out who he meets, and we'll have a little chat about the book afterwards. Dark is necessary. Plop asked, what's next? A great many times during that night. He sat just outside the nest hole, making loud snoring noises. He was not asleep, just hungry. Owls always snore when they're hungry. Oh, Plop, I shall be glad when you can hunt for yourself said Mrs Barnoil wearily, as Plop had gulped down his seventh, or was it eighth, dinner. What's next? asked Plop. Nothing, said his mother. You can't possibly have room for anything else. I have, said Plop. My mice place is full up, but my grasshopper place isn't. Well, that's just too bad, said Mrs Barnoil, stretching and settling herself down to roost. Mr. Barnoil swooped in, clapping his wings. He dropped something at Plop's feet. Plop swallowed it in one gulp. It was deliciously slippery. That was nice, he said. What was that? A fish, said his father. I like fish, said Plop. What's next? Bed, said Mr. Barnoil. He kissed his wife good night, or good day, I suppose it was, and settled himself down to roost. Plop made a few hopeful snoring noises, but it was clear that the feast was over. He wobbled into the nest hole and was soon fast asleep. It was well into the afternoon when he woke up. He came out onto the landing branch and looked around. His parents were still drawn up as still as carvings, and the squirrels from downstairs were chasing each other up and down the trunk, their tails flying behind them. Plop watched them for a bit. One of them scuttled along the branch just below Plops and then stopped abruptly and began to wash his face. He did not know that Plop was there. After all, owls are supposed to be asleep during the daytime. Plop could not resist it. He bent down through the leaves and let out his very loudest eek! The squirrel jumped into the air like a jack-in-a-box, his ears a quiver, his eyes like marbles. He flashed down the trunk and vanished into his hole. Plop jumped up and down with delight, but of course he had done it again. He had woken his mother. Plop? Yes, mummy. Go and find out some more about the dark, please, dear. Now, said Plop. Now, said his mother. Go and ask what that little girl thinks about it. What little girl? That little girl is sitting down there. The one with the ponytail. Little girls don't have tails. Well, this one does. Go on now or you'll miss her. So Plop shut his eyes, took a deep breath and fell off his branch. His landing was a little better than usual. He bounced three times and rolled gently towards the little girl's feet. Oh, a woolly ball, cried the little girl. Actually, I'm a barn owl, said the woolly ball. An owl? Are you sure? She said, putting out a grubby finger and prodding Plop Plop's round, fluffy tummy. Quite sure, said Plop, backing away and drawing himself up tall. Well, there's no need to be huffy, said the little girl. You bounced. You must expect to be mistaken for a ball if you will go about bouncing. I've never met an owl before. Do you say to it to woo? No, said Plop. That's tawny isles. Oh, you can't be a proper isle then, said the little girl. Proper isles say to it to woo. I am a proper isle, said Plop, getting very cross. I am a barn isle, and barn isles go eek like that. Oh, don't do that said the little girl, putting her hands over her ears. 
Well, you shouldn't have made me cross, said Plop. Anyway, you can't be a proper girl. What did you say? said the little girl, taking her hands off her ears. I said you're not a proper girl. Girls don't have tails. Squirrels have tails. Rabbits have tails. Mice. This is a ponytail, said the little girl. It's the longest one in class, she added proudly. But why do you want to look like a pony, added Plop. Because, oh, because it's the fashion, said the little girl. Don't you know anything? Not much, agreed Plop. Mummy says that that is why I'm afraid of the dark, because I don't know anything about it. Do you like the dark? The little girl looked at Plop in surprise. Well, of course I do, she said. There has to be dark. Dark is necessary. Dark is necess uh, is water? Necessary. We need it. We can't do without it. I could do without it, said Plop. I could do without it very nicely. Father Christmas wouldn't come, said the little girl. You'll have an empty stocking on Christmas Day. I don't really wear stockings, said Plop. And who is Father Christmas? Well, Father Christmas is a fat, jolly old man with a white beard. And he wears a red suit with a matching hat and black boots. Is that the fashion? asked Plop. No, said the little girl. It's just what he always wears in pictures of him. Although I don't know how anybody knows because nobody has ever seen him. What? said Plop. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Father Christmas only comes in the dark. He comes in the middle of the night riding through the sky on a sledge pulled by reindeer. Deer, said Plop, in the sky. Magic deer, said the little girl. Everything about Father Christmas is magic. Otherwise, he couldn't possibly get round all the children in the world in one night. Or have enough toys for them all in his sack. You didn't tell me about his sack. Oh, he has a sack full of toys and he puts them in the children's stockings. In their stockings, said Plop, with their feet in them. Now, there can't be much room. <laughs> no, silly. We hang empty stockings at the ends of our beds for him to fill. I usually borrow one of Mummy's, but last year I hung up my tights. And did he fill them, breathed Plop? No, only one leg. But he did put a sugar mouse in the other one. I'd rather have a real mouse, said Plop. So would I, really, said the little girl. I wanted a white mouse, but Mummy says that if a mouse comes into the house, she will leave it. And I suppose Father Christmas didn't want me to be an orphan. Plop was thinking, I don't think oils have Father Christmas. Not barn oils, anyway. And I haven't got a stocking to hang up. Ah... Uh, what a shame, said the little girl. Everybody should have Father Christmas. It's so exciting waking up in the morning and feeling all the bumps in your stocking, trying to guess what it is. Oh, stop it, wheel plop. I wish he would come to me. Shut your eyes, the little girl said. Go on, shut them, and you may get a surprise. Plop shut his eyes tight and waited. The little girl quickly pulled off her wellington and took off a sock. She was wearing two pairs because the boots were a bit big for her. Open your eyes, she said to Plop, holding up the sock while she stood on one leg and wriggled her foot back into her wellington. Plop opened his eyes and then shut them again because he couldn't believe what he saw. Don't you want it, said the little girl. Oh, I know it's a bit holy, but I don't expect Father Christmas will mind. Oh, Thank you, said Plop, taking it with his beak and then holding it in his foot. Thank you so very much. I'll go and hang it up at once. Oh, not yet, laughed the little girl. You'll have to wait until Christmas Eve. Well, I must go now. It must be nearly tea time. Goodbye. I do hope Father Christmas will come to you. Goodbye, said Plop, bobbing his funny little boy. You are very kind. You are a proper girl. And you have a very nice eek. 
said the little girl. I'm going to practice it to make my brothers jump. Eek! And she ran off and Plop could hear her eking right across the field. Plop picked up the sock with his beak and flew up to the landing branch. Well, said his mother. Jalel goes, says, he began with his mouth full of sock. He put it down and tried again. The little girl says dark is necessary because of Father Christmas coming, he said. And what do you think, Plop? I still do not like it at all, but I'm going to hang up this sock on Christmas Eve. And Plop took his sock and put it away very carefully in a corner of the nest hole, ready for Christmas. Getting a little bit festive here, girls and boys. I wonder, do you have a stocking or a sock uh, to hang at the end of your bed at Christmas time for Father Christmas to come along? We need to stop talking about this. It's the summer. We'll leave all that Christmas talk to December. So there, Prop has been told that dark is necessary for Christmas. Um, I wonder what other things would dark be necessary for? I know for me, I'd never be able to get to sleep um, if it was bright. Let's move on now to the activity. Now the activity in your booklet, there's three separate sheets. I just want to put out there, girls and boys, that there is absolutely no pressure for you to sit down and do these all at the same time. This can be done over, over a series of two to three days. Um, and if I put up a new video and you're like, oh, I need to get moving, don't worry. The videos are going absolutely nowhere and you can work with this at your own time. So just don't panic if you're not fully caught up at the moment. So let's have a look at this activity. Uh, so we're starting off unscrambling some words here. And these words would have appeared in the story. So you might have to go back and listen again very, very carefully. Um, I know that in one of our family quizzes, we had these anagrams, not this, these exact words, but it's tricky enough, girls and boys, so have a good go. Um, and then you've just got to complete the sentences, fill in the missing words, um, etc. And the words are down at the bottom. So if you're going, oh, not too sure, the words are right there. The next activity is putting the sentences in the correct order. So hopefully you were paying really close attention when you were listening to the story there. Um, and don't forget to start each sentence with a capital letter and to finish each, step, each sentence with a full stop. Please remember those. Then down below, there's just some comprehension questions for the game for a Christmas story. Finally, you've got this activity. And you've got to write this passage again, but you've got to put in the correct punctuation. Um, like there's there's capital letters that are missing, there's full stops that are missing, perhaps there's some spelling mistakes. Have a really good look in there, girls and boys. And then at the bottom, you can draw a pop with a sock as a stocking. Um, and you can be as creative as you want there. So that's a nice way to end those activities. So there you have it. There's your activities for this chapter. Enjoy. And I look forward to seeing how you get on with those. Our next chapter is called Dark is Fascinating. Very interesting. So I wonder what could be fascinating about the dark and who could our lovely character Plop meet? I'll leave you to predict. Also, fantastic artwork has been sent to me. Oh my, girls and boys, I cannot get over it. I've been getting these amazing emails all week from Mr. Comfort with the most wonderful, beautiful pictures of your artwork. Fantastic. If you haven't already and you don't know, please do send me your artwork, a picture of your artwork, send it to the school email address and it will be forwarded on to me as I work on our big P4 art show video cannot wait. I'm going to give you girls and boys another week or so to get your entries in so I can get them in in the video and then I'm hoping in the next sort of week and a half, two weeks, I'll have the video up so I will let you know but I want to give everybody as much time as possible to do their artwork, to take a picture of it and to send it in. Well that is us 
for another episode. Really hope you have a fantastic week. Remember to check Education City for new activities today and new activities on Wednesday. So keep your eyes peeled for those. And I'll see you again on Wednesday anyway. So take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Enjoy the joke of the day. What did Rudolph say about the big book of noses? I already read that one.